This video will explain some of the details behind an amazing research study presented by OpenAI using a meta-learning algorithm known as automatic domain randomization to bridge the sim to real gap and control a robotic hand to solve Rubik's cubes. In addition to an extensive blog post, videos, and many more content discussing the algorithm, miscellaneous uh, characteristics about the result of the algorithm, you can also check out their full 51-page research paper, Solving Rubik's Cube with a Robot Hand. The first half of the paper is uh, dedicated to describing the hardware, uh, you know, the construction of the physical robotic hand, and then the latter half of the paper is covering the software, the reinforced learning algorithms, uh, computer vision, this kind of thing that we're going to cover in this summary. One of the most interesting characteristics about the success of using this robotic hand to solve the robotics cube is that all of the training data, the models, are trained and only in simulation, never interfacing with the real world until testing time. So there are two separate uh, models. There's the policy network that is mapping the, uh, controlling the robotic hand to make the manipulations and move the Rubik's Cube, and then there's the vision model that's used to estimate the cube pose and then get the face angles. So the actual solving the Rubik's Cube is done by a separate uh, solver algorithm. The models implemented by OpenAI are using the uh, controlling the robotic hand and then using the vision models to give the uh, solving algorithm the position of the Rubik's Cube. The Rubik's Cube Solver is similar to a research study presented in July 2018 by OpenAI on block reorientation. This algorithm also uses a form of domain randomization, except in this case it's a manually coded domain randomization compared to this current algorithm which is automatically learned, a meta-learning algorithm for the domain randomization. Also, the Rubik's Cube requires you know, more controlled uh, manipulation of the robotic hand and also requires more information from the vision model. The problem that domain randomization aims to solve is the simulation to reality uh, gap. So shown on the left is the simulated cube in the simulated environments, and then on the right is the real cube in the real physical world. So this idea of domain randomization was first introduced in March 2017, where basically the idea is instead of simulating a, uh, like a completely realistic visual world, you'll simulate a massive, diverse set of visual worlds, and then it will hopefully generalize to the real world. So their, their idea in uh, this paper isn't just to simulate uh, visual appearances, but also uh, physics and the different dynamics that the robotic hand has access to. The idea behind automatic domain randomization is that the amount of domain randomization is increased automatically. So the initial environment is very closely resembling the physical world, the real world, and then the environment starts to get more and more random as it uh, learns and as the meta controller controlling the distribution of the random environments, the update distribution, sample and environment from the meta learning distribution model for the automatic domain randomization. And then you use this to generate the data and then optimize the vision and the control models. It's easy to understand how we might have a visual world randomization, things like the different lighting effects, the colors of the block, or the Rubik's Cube, and these kinds of miscellaneous uh, lighting visual effects. But the dynamics are more interesting, things like the size of the Rubik's Cube, the mass of the cube, and the friction of the robot's fingers, all things that go as input to the physics simulator are being randomized with this automatic domain randomization algorithm. Visualization provided by OpenAI's blog post accommodating the research study shows how you might uh, go about simulating the different sizes of the Rubik's Cubes. So in some physics simulations, the uh, robot hand has access to this very large Rubik's Cube compared to a very small Rubik's Cube. This is just one example of how these uh, dynamics factors are being simulated and randomized in the automatic domain randomization algorithm. This kind of domain randomization gives rise to an emergent meta-learning of the model. So from the paper, we hypothesize that this inserted emergent meta-learning happens if the training distribution is so large that the model cannot memorize a special purpose solution per environment due to its finite capacity. So basically, because the model, the neural network, only has a finite capacity, it can't just learn to memorize all the different uh, randomized environments that it encounters. Rather, it has to learn how to adapt its sense of the dynamics given a new environment from the previously experienced environments. From this, we can gain an understanding of the automatic domain randomization algorithm. We start off with an a uh, distribution sample of phi sub zero, which is the initial environment conditions. Then we sample an environment with the parameters lambda from the distribution given by this phi. As we train our model, if it exceeds some performance threshold given by the uh, T sub H being the high threshold and T sub L being the low threshold, meaning that if it doesn't exceed the uh, lower threshold, that means that maybe the randomization is too intense and the model can't survive this so that you would uh, adjust the parameters of the environment distribution to make it easier. Or if it's you know, succeeding, then you would increase the uh, distribution. So the ADR algorithm iterates between uh, sampling environments from the current distribution of the, uh, of the environments, and then it will go and generate new training data. This automatic domain randomization algorithm is similar to the POET paired open-ended trailblazer algorithm in the idea of having unbounded environmental complexity. So in this algorithm, the bipedal walking agent is learning to walk and the environment is adapting with the agent 
to make all sorts of different kinds of obstacles for the agent to learn how to walk in. So the analogy between poet and automatic domain randomization is that whereas the bipedal walker is learning on all sorts of different terrains how to balance the robot and walk as fast as it can, the uh, Rubik's Cube solving robotic hand is learning how to solve the Rubik's Cube with all sorts of different configurations of its hand, the mass of the cube, the size of the cube, and then all sorts of other visual conditions like lighting, color of the cube, miscellaneous things like that. The research study compares the automatic domain randomization compared to the manual domain randomization used for the study published in July 2018, the block orientation task. So in this case, in the beginning, the ADR algorithm performs worse, but then as the ADR increases the entropy, meaning that as the randomization gets more intense and the environments are increasingly different from each other, the transfer performance doubles and it starts to perform much better than the previous manual domain randomization algorithm. The meta-learning algorithm gives rise to some really interesting characteristics, such as robustness to perturbations. These animations show different characteristics, different perturbations, such as uh, wearing a rubber glove on the robotic hand, having tied together fingers, uh, this blanket occlusion, which is something that I'm actually sort of curious about. I don't understand how the vision model still works with the blanket occlusion shown in this bottom left corner. And then with the uh, plus giraffe pushing the Rubik's Cube, and then with a pen pushing the Rubik's Cube. In this case, we're looking at the emergent meta-learning, and this is due to the memory augmented, the LSTM layer in the policy networks. So in this case, we're defining meta-learning as the ability to learn the environment dynamics. So even if the environment dynamics changes the probability of the next state given current state action pair, the model is able to adapt and learn the new model dynamics, but not explicitly as in model-based reinforcement learning. So meta-learning, the idea, training an LSTM over an automatically uh, domain-randomized distribution is implicit meta-learning. This implicit meta-learning is encoded in the LSTM layers of the policy network that uh, estimates the value function as well as the policy mapping from state to action in this kind of actor-critic architecture. So these are some of the perturbations of the test other than the ones like uh, putting the blanket over it and uh, tying the fingers together. They test these things like time to success when the network's memory is erased, when the friction mass or gravity change in the physics dynamics, or when the robot is impaired by breaking a random joint. And the perturbations here are testing whether the uh, agent is able to learn the dynamics, the probability of the next state given a current state action pair. Another interesting characteristic is that the vision network is separate from the control policy network used to control the robotic hand. So the vision network has three RGB cameras, a left camera, top camera, and right camera, and you see how they have these convolutional neural network architectures where they pass through a convolutional layer, drop out max pool, and then a pre-trained ResNet 50, or I assume it's pre-trained, I don't know if it's actually pre-trained, and then they will output things like the uh, face angles, and the miscellaneous position and orientation characteristics of the Rubik's Cube. And they also include in the paper things like uh, using either this Ginker Cube or something like that where they have this uh, Bluetooth in the cube that gives it additional information for the vision network or something like putting a sticker on the uh, different center faces of the Rubik's Cube to make the vision task easier. So the current status of this algorithm is that is given in this chart here. You see that in the uh, maximally difficult case without the uh, Gicker uh, Rubik's Cube that provides additional information, it solves the Rubik's Cube about 20% of the time. But with the Gicker Cube, it is up to 60%. Thanks for watching this explanation of OpenAI solving a Rubik's Cube with a robotic hand. Hopefully from this video, you took away the idea of automatic domain randomization to bridge the sim to real gap. I highly recommend checking out OpenAI's blog post accommodating this research study, as well as their full research paper. Please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos.